Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing and the ultimate Jaded Brewing Scylla Immersion Shell Review test. A lot of words, but it's what it is. First, a little disclaimer. Jaded Brewing isn't paying me for this. And yes, I purchased both of these Scyllas personally about a month apart, although they were nice enough to give me an affiliate link, which I truly appreciate. So if you decide to purchase one, any type of Jaded Brewing product, especially the Scylla, um, Clicking the link in the description would be awesome and greatly appreciated as it might offset my water bill because it's probably going to be huge. I'm not going to tell you how much water I used other than my wife might kill me after she finds it. Um, but simply, if you're great at math, you can do the math with the information I'm going to supply in this video and then double that. That's an insane amount. Although I will tell you the most successful test, which is the last test we thought of doing, um, also used the least amount of water by a considerable amount, and it was amazing. The reason I'm doing this is I was so impressed with the Scylla from Jade Brewing and their company, and simply want to share the information with fellow brewers. In the description below the video, I will include an index of each event, including the summary times to help those who like to skip around, find what you're looking for as far as each test. So on with the story and testing, and don't forget to support us by hitting the subscribe button, the like button, if you like it, I hope, and to help the channel grow, please leave me a comment if you got a question, concern, or a test you thought, hey, you probably should have tried this. So after purchasing, this is the story. So after purchasing my first Jaded Brewing Cellar, which is an immersion chiller where you put it into the boiling wort and bring the temperature down, for those who don't know what a cellar is or what an immersion chiller is, I was so impressed. I really wish I had purchased one years ago. I had never seen anything so effective as far as a chiller. And to think of all the hours I lost waiting for my wort to chill, kind of like waiting the water to boil. I'm a very creative and always thinking of new things that should either exist and they don't or ways to tweak things and make them better. So I sat there and I'm thinking, if one sill is great, I wonder what two sillas would be like. So I decided to purchase a second jaded brewing sill to see if I could double my cooling. Well, kind of using them in a series, one after another. My theory was to connect one after another with one being submerged in an ice bath and the other one in boiling wort to allow even faster chilling. My tap water is at 82 Fahrenheit and sometimes at 74, closer to the winter. This type of thinking is why we're about to conduct all of these cool tests, which have already been done, with the Scylla from Jaded Brewing. What makes the Jaded Brewing immersion chiller so special? People are like, ah, I can build my own immersion chiller. I bought, I have an old immersion chiller. Well, I spoke to Clay through email, who is part of Jaded Brewing, and they performed tons of tests with 25 and 50 foot copper tubing and found that the 25 foot actually worked noticeably better compared to the 50 foot, which, wait, more isn't always better? I thought it was. More is better if it's applied correctly in many circumstances. So wherever possible, Jaded Chilling or Jaded Brewing Chilling Systems designed immersion chillers with that in mind for almost every possible brewing system. If not, they will custom make it. And I didn't ask Clay about this. I found this all on their website. Essentially, the Scylla is three 25 foot copper, three eighths inch tubing chillers in one. So basically it's three chillers in one, effectively giving you three immersion chillers working in parallel at the exact same time, giving you amazing cooler, cooling, sorry, with simple tap water. So after conversing with Clay through email from Jaded Brewing, he kind of gave me an idea on a test I hadn't thought about doing, and I planned on running a lot of tests, but he said, why don't you try running one with a quarter horsepower sump pump, which we bought that exact pump he recommended. I had to get it open box to get it timely um, and put it in an ice bath. And I said, hey, I love this ideal. Well, I modified it twice, actually, <laughs> and made it one of the best ways of using your Scylla for chilling. Special thank you for Clay on that one. Awesome. If you have lots of ice in your house or can produce ice fast, you're going to love some of these tests. First, I ran some tests to ensure the best overall performance. I'm going to show this on the screen so everybody can see the breakdown. All tests uh, plus or minus about a 0.1 of a second. Me hitting the button repeatedly. We had a green garden hose. It was one of those expandable kinds that keeps growing as you add water. We were getting one gallon for every 14 seconds, which is 4.29 gallons, which sounds pretty decent. Then we used a generic white hose and that we were getting one gallon every 8.8 .8 seconds, which means 6.82 gallons per minute. But it's a gallon and a half more or two and a half gallons more water. 6.67 per minute on a quarter horsepower sump pump, which was actually a gallon every nine seconds. And then the white hose through a Scylla, 
And then the white goes through two cillas, we were getting 11.2. White goes through one cilla with sump pump, we were getting 10.6. The theme here is that the smaller the pipe, the slower the water was coming out or less water was coming out. And the more it had to travel, the more drag was created on the water, just like it goes through a keyser on the liquid side. Um, I had been using a green garden hose and was shocked to find out how subpar it was for what I was using it for. Great for watering things, but nothing else. That's why I swapped it out for that half inch um, inside diameter, which I think really, yeah, it's half inch. It's five eighths inch on the outside, half inch on the inside. So if you're looking for a hose, get something with a half inch diameter, you'll get much better throughput, especially if you have the decent water pressure at your house. Here are some of the parameters for our tests. All the water came from the spigot, was at 82 Fahrenheit. So any water coming from the spigot, 82 Fahrenheit. Anvil was our all-in-one boil kettle for the Scylla immersion chiller. With that in note, the first measurement is 20 liters. So all tests were started at a 20 liter test or 5.28 gallons of tap water at 212 Fahrenheit. According to the anvil, which is what we were gonna to use to monitor the temperatures throughout the whole test. Keep in mind, when I did surface temps, they were always 220 Fahrenheit. I don't understand why. Um, and as soon as we shut off the, the main juice, it said 209 Fahrenheit. I turned it back on, it would say 212. I did reach out to Anvil asking why on a couple of those. I have not heard back. The main thing is I wanna know about where it's supposed to be monitoring the temp. So our goal will be to see how long it takes each test to get 92, to 92 Fahrenheit, which is 10 degrees above my tap water, which is 82 followed by an additional stop point of 84 Fahrenheit, which is the lowest I could attain from our tap water in a timely manner. Any additional attempts that were possible were simply done for gathering information on what was possible during that specific test in a timely manner. Sometimes I got frustrated, so it is what it is. I always made sure the water was flowing before dropping the Scylla into the boiling water or wort, if it were wort. Um, otherwise, if I didn't, I'd let you know, but every single test, that's how we did it. Here are the seven tests that we ran. The first test, normal Scylla, running the tap water right from the wall, going on out another hose, without agitation. We didn't mess with the water and it did really well. Second test, normal Scylla with agitation, using our little stick and our pump and get the water moving. Third test, normal Scylla with the water being agitated, but the water was being supplied from a sump pump, which was this one right here, submerged in 40 pounds of ice and additional water was being added at 82 Fahrenheit. It was pretty cool water. Fourth test, two Scylla's in series, one packed in 40 pounds of ice, one in the anvil with agitation. Fifth test, same exact thing, except six tablespoons of table salt to help cool the ice and get the ice to break down even faster and get colder faster. The sixth test, which was kind of an additional test that we threw in there was normal Scylla using the agitation with the sump pump in 40 pounds of ice, but recirculating the water right back into the sump pump instead of out into the lawn or yard. The last test was a fun test. Two Scylla's in series with one packed with 18 pounds or $30 for the dry ice, and the other one sitting in the boiling water with agitation. It was a lot of shooting. I hope you all appreciate this. I look forward to uh, seeing the comments since this took us a little over three, three and a half days of shooting between doing the tests, redoing the tests, and dealing with lots of rain and lots of lawnmowers. Thank you again. Let's get testing. Test one of one for the Scylla. We're sitting at 212 Fahrenheit according to the anvil. The reason I say that is the anvil has only been about two degrees hotter than what it says at the very surface. Right now, I just took the temperature and we're sitting at 220 degrees Fahrenheit. So I want everybody to be aware of that. Our water is sitting at about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm dropping it in and here we go. We're just watching actual temp and change this to whatever we want it to be. And we're gonna watch the temperature go down. And we're gonna time it through the video. Note, we are 10 degrees above our current water temperature coming out of the hose.
Okay, we're gonna stop it at two degrees above. We forgot to do the agitation, so hey, another test without the agitation. Here we go, straight Scylla with agitation. And drop to 209 like it always does. Okay. This is a single anvil filler, so using a sump pump, sitting in ice water, pretty much at around 32, 33 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll say 33 since we had to add warmer water. And it's 40 pounds of ice. Clay from Jaded Brewing recommended this and we give it a shot. Makes it a lot easier for people who have sump pumps and lots of ice and a single cellar. Let's see how it goes. Again, this is at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The top is really sitting about 220. So we're going to take the, it's going to be a little harder here because we've got to do it all at one time. So I'm going to take this, which is sitting at 82 to 84 degrees. We'll drop it in. Right. We're already rocking and rolling. We haven't even started the sump pump, which is good. So it's chilling itself with a little cool. And here goes the sump pump. Oh, I screwed up, I'm sorry. Fahrenheit, we hit Celsius by accident. So we're at 116 and dropping. Okay, we're at the 92, which we normally are for our tap water. We want to keep going for a little while since there's ice. Although the ice water is getting warmer with me pouring 82 degrees Fahrenheit water on top. Clay's recommendation works beautifully. Start it down really, really fast. So if you either have cheap ice or you have a good supply of ice in your house, this is definitely an option. And we did a test with the sump pump and the actual process as far as gallons per minute were almost comparable to right off the spigot, which is amazing. It's a rather inexpensive sump pump. We'll call it at 72, since I've pretty much melted almost all the ice. Our water's sitting at about 60 almost. That would definitely get you down to pitching temp very quickly. 40 pounds of ice, some water, and a single Scylla from Jaded Brewing. My experiment, taking two Scyllas Basically, the water will flow in through here, hit this cellar, come out, come across, hit this cellar, and then go back out. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put ice in that one. We've got 40 pounds of ice here. Okay, we're at 212 degrees. We're gonna drop the cellar, which has water coming from there. It's sitting at about 32, 34 degrees. Drop it in, put a pump on. Ah, I hit the Fahrenheit again. Be careful, man. And we're off. Our pump's on. Pumps are dropping. Okay, we're at 92 Fahrenheit. It's where we were with the actual tap temperature. So we're sitting 40. See how much colder it gets, how long it takes. For 212 boil, as soon as I shut the boil off, it always says 209. I'm not sure why. Every time I take my most accurate temperature probe and check it, the surface temp is always about 220 Fahrenheit. 
So I'm not sure how that happens, but okay. We've got 40 pounds, a little melted, but 40 pounds of ice in here. With probably it's going to do about four tablespoons of salt. I've got about six tablespoons, uh, heaping tablespoons of uh, just regular table salt mixed in there. Ice cold. We're going to drop the chiller in. So we can do it as fast as we can. And there it goes. Get our agitation going. said, hey, just take the Scylla, put a sump pump in ice, fill it with water, and pump it through. I don't know if he meant pump it through and keep adding water, or what we thought of while we were editing the, editing the video was just recirculating it back into the 40 pounds of ice. Because instead of running 82 degrees Fahrenheit water, we'll just our water will consistently be cooling down and hopefully not impact this as much. But we don't know. It's a theory. So let's try it. The sump pump puts out about a gallon per nine seconds, so it's not much slower than that of our regular hose. So let's get going. We're at 212. Remember when I kick it down, it's automatically gonna drop to 209. Haven't heard back from Anvil, so I'm not sure why, but I did ask them. Here we go. We're gonna plug the sump pump in early this time instead of 14 seconds after. Okay, there it gets going. Okay, it's going now. Here we go. Let's take the glasses since I can't see. Power. Power. And drop. And there we go. Eighty-four. We're able to get to seventy-two. <clears throat> Keep going for a little bit. See how far we go. Sixty-four. sitting at about 63 up here, so we're not gonna go colder. It would be a miracle. Okay, we're at 212. I've never played with dry ice since I was a kid, pretty much. So I'm afraid it would freeze the water in the Scylla. So what we're gonna do is I recruited my youngest son. We're gonna help pack the dry ice around it while the water is moving through it. Otherwise, I'm afraid if I pack it, well, the, the water's not moving, it'll freeze into a block inside of the Scylla and then I'll be SOL, put it politely. Okay, all that noise, I'm sorry, but that's the dry ice. I guess we may not have the crush it so much that I thought we would. Who knows the water stops falling? That's it, that's all we need.
Okay, put it up here in front of the camera. Looks like it's boiling. For anybody who hasn't seen that, I think most people have, but just in case. And we're packing towels down here to keep the cold. Okay, here we go. So we're at 212 on the boil. You know it's gonna drop the minute I... Hmm. I would have expected this cellar to feel really cold, but I guess not. Like I said, it only drops to 89. Okay, here we go. Let's kick on the pump. My agitation going. This is sitting well below negative 45 Fahrenheit. Water's running. Afraid it might freeze up. Thank you for watching our video. This is Better Reality Brewing. 200 pounds of ice, $30 worth of dry ice, and a lot of time was put into this video. Truly appreciate subscribes, comments, keep supporting our channel. We have much more to come. Thanks again.